In this class, we are going to see some more examples of triad determination in copolymers and also in terpolymers. Finally, some applications of these studies are also going to be shown. Let's see an ethylene one xine copolymer. This copolymer has in the main chain ethylene units and some butyl branches as we can see in the figure with the corresponding nomenclature for each carbon as we have seen in the previous classes. Here we have a table that has in the first column all the possible peaks from 1 to 16 of an ethylene one xine copolymer. In the second column we have the experimental chemical shift in PPM obtained directly from the spectra. In the third column, there are the calculated chemical shifts in PPM obtained using the equation of Liederman and Adams, as we have seen in part 7 of this course. In the fourth column, we have the triad or tetrad sequences for the ethylene one xinco copolymer corresponding to the chemical shift. And finally, the carbon atom of the triad related to each chemical shift. Here we have an example of an ethylene one xine spectrum. All the possible peaks are marked in blue. As we can see, not all the peaks are present. That means that some of the triads do not exist. We can also see above the spectrum peaks the corresponding sequences in carbon atom in accordance to the previous table. Now we are going to take the table again and try to make a quantitative analysis to relate the triads with the integrals. We can see that the triad HHH is represented by peaks 8, 12, and 16. So we can write the following equation. HHH equal to K, that is the normalization constant, multiplied by the sum of the integrals of peak A, 12, and 16, divided by 3 to obtain the average. When there is the possibility to have a triad represented by different peaks, it is always preferable to take an average of all in the integrals of the, to minimize errors. Returning to the table, we can see that the triads EHA plus HHE are not isolated. Only the triad HHE is represented by peak 15. So we estimate that there can be the same amount of the triad EHH, so we can multiply the integral of peak 15 by 2. Thus, we obtain the equation EHH plus HHE equal to K multiplied by 2 times the integral of peak 15. Returning to the table again, we can see that the triad ethylene xine ethylene is represented by peaks 9 and 14. So we can write the following equation. Triad EHE equal to k multiplied by the sum of the integrals of peak 9 and 14 divided by 2 to obtain the average. Triads EEH plus HEE are represented by peaks 4 and 7. So we can write the equation triads EEH plus HEE equal k multiplied by the integral of peak 4 and 7 divided by 2 to have the integral average. Triad xine ethylene xine is represented by peak 3. So the equation is HEH 
equal to k multiplied by the integral of big 3. Finally, 3 at e, e, e is related to big 6, but as this peak is due to two carbon atoms of this triad, we have to divide the integral of this peak by 2 to obtain one carbon of the triad. Returning to our ethylene one exine spectrum, we take the peak integrals that are marked below each peak. Then we introduce the integral in the equations that we have obtained previously from the table. We add all the values for each triad and we divide by this total or what is the same, we multiply the relative values of each triad by the normalization constant. That is the inverse of the total value. In this way, the final value of each triad is their molar fraction. And if we multiply by 100, we have the percentage of each triad. All these operations are described in this table. As we can see, this ethylene one xin copolymer do not have sequences HHH, HHE, EHH, and HEH, and has 1.1% of triad EHE, 3.6% of triads EEH plus HEE, and 95.3 of sequences EEE. We can imagine a copolymer constituted mainly by a polyethylene chain with isolated butyl branches. If we want to know the amount of each copolymer, we just add the triad centered in E to obtain the ethylene amount and the triad centered in H to obtain the amount of one xin. In this case, we have a copolymer with 1.1% of one xin and 98.9% of ethylene. It is also possible to obtain the average sequence length and the reactivity radius using the equation described in part 7 of this course. I want to show you another example that are the copolymer with long branches. The ethylene alpha olefin copolymers with an alpha olefin from propylene to one xin, that is, with branching from methyl till butyl, have all different carbon 13 NMR spectra. However, ethylene copolymers with higher branches have very similar spectra. This is because carbon 13 NMR do not distinguish the chemical environment of a carbon further than the delta carbon from it. So let's see how we can treat this case with the example of a ethylene one octadecene copolymer. Here we can see in this figure the structure of this copolymer and the nomenclature. Here we have obtained a table with all the possible triads of ethylene one octadecene copolymers in the same way that we have done before. For more details, you can go back to part seven of this course. In the same way that we have done before, we look for peaks that are related to triads in the table. So we see that the triads OOO can be easily related with peaks 15 and 18, and triads EOO plus OOE to peaks 12 and 17. Triad EOE is represented by peak 16. Triads EEO plus OEE can be related to peaks 4 and 7, but as peak 7 is very close to other peaks, so it is preferable to use only peak 4 that is more isolated. In both cases, those peaks represent also a carbon atom of the branch from all the triads centered in one octadecene, that is EOE, EOO plus OOE and OOO. 
as those triads are represented also by big 9, we can subtract the integral of big 9 to obtain the triads EEO plus OEE. For triad OEO, we can use the integral of big 3. And finally, for triads EEE, we use the big 6. But in this peak, there are five carbons of the branch, from carbon 5 to 13 of the branch. So we can use the integral of peak 9 multiplied by 8 to subtract to the integral of peak 6. Remember that in this case, we have to divide by 2 because there are two carbons, delta, delta, of triad EEE. Here we have an example of an ethylene one octadecene carbon 13 NMR spectrum. The 18 peaks of the table have been located in the position of the possible peaks, and it can be seen in blue. As we can see, not all the peaks are present. We have the integral of each peak at the bottom of the spectrum. So we take all the peak integrals that we need in accordance with the previous equations. Then we introduce the integral values in the triad equations. We normalize adding all the values and multiply by the normalization constant to obtain the triad molar fraction. We multiply by the 100 to obtain the triad percentage. This copolymer has 4.1% of triads, EOE, 6.3% of triads EEO plus OEE, and 89.6% of triads EEE. If we want to know the percentage of each comonomer, we add the triads centered in O to know the amount of one octadecene, that is, in this case, 4.1%, and the triad centered in E to have the amount of ethylene, that is 95.9%. Now I am going to show you a more complex case, that is a propylene one xene copolymer. Here we can see a figure with the structure and the nomenclature used for the carbon atoms of this copolymer. Here we have the table with the assignments of all the possible resonances, the calculated and experimental chemical shift, the triads and the carbon atoms related to each peak. This table was obtained in the same way as I have shown before for the ethylene one olefin copolymers. As it can be seen in the table, most of the peaks are due to multiple triads. For example, all the carbon atoms of the butyl branch named 1, 2, 3, and 4, B4, have the same chemical shift for all the triads centered in xene. This can complicate the quantitative determination of each triad. This type of copolymer can be treated in two different ways, depending on the amount of one xene. In general, as one xene is le less reactive uh, than propylene, in most of the cases, the triads with consecutive sequences of this monomer are not present. So the first case is when the peak 9, around 41 ppm, exists or is different to 0. That means that we have the sequences HHP and HHH. In this case, we can only determine the diads and we can use peaks above 40 ppm due to alpha-alpha carbon atoms, 9, 10, and 11. As we can see in the table, peak 9 corresponds to diad HH, that is equal to the sum of triads HHH plus half of the triads PHH plus HHP. Peak 10 corresponds to diads PH plus HP that are equal to triads PHP plus half of the triads PHH plus HHP plus triad HPH plus half 
of the triads PPH plus HPP. Peak 11 corresponds to triad PP, that is equal to triads PPP plus half of the triads PPH plus HPP. In summary, we can write this general case as that the, tri the diad HH is equal to the normalization constant multiplied by the integral of peak 9. Diads PH plus HP are equal to K multiplied by the integral of peak 10, and diad PP is equal to K multiplied by integral of peak 11. The second case is when the peak 9 is equal to 0. So triads HHH -H and HHP are equal to 0. As normally, if HHP is not present, PHH is not present either. So PHA plus HHP is equal to 0. If we suppose that also HPH is not present, the table can be simplified and the triad PHP can be determined using the average of peaks 1, 4, 6, 7, and 8. When we have several peaks that represent the same triad, as in this case, the triad PHP, we can use just one of these peaks or more. Normally, when we use more peaks and take the average of them, as we are doing, we minimize the integral error that is sometimes significant. Triad HPP can be calculated from the subtraction of the integral of peak 11 from peak 5. As the triad PPH should be equal to triad HPP, we can write that the sum of PPH and HPP is equal to 2 times the integral 5 minus integral of peak 11. As in peak 5, we have the triad PPP and PPH plus HPP, we can obtain the triad PPP if we discount the triad PPH plus HPP. So we can write PPP equal to integral of peak 5 min minus 2 multiplied by the integral of peak 5 minus integral of peak 11. Rearranging, we have 2 times integral of peak 11 minus integral of peak 5. Peak 10 can be simplified if PHH and HPH are 0. In this case, peak 10 is due only to triads PHP and HPP. As we can calculate triad PHP using all the peaks of butyl branch, we can obtain HPP if we subtract triad PHP from peak 10. As triad HPP is equal to PPH, the sum of HPP plus PPH is equal to 2 times peak 10 minus the average of peak 1, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Finally, we have the summary of all the normalized triads. Here we have a propylene one xine copolymer with peak 9 different to 0. We can see all the peaks numbers in blue. The corresponding triads in some peaks and the integral below the resonance. As we have seen before, in this case, we can only determine the diads and peaks 9, 10, and 11 represent all of them. So we can see the integral of these peaks and the calculation of the normalization constant that is the inverse of the sum of these integrals. In the table, we can see the used equations the molar fraction of each triad, and finally the percentages. So this copolymer has 0.5% of diads HH, 11.1% of diads PH plus HP, and 
4% of the FTP. We can also calculate the amount of each monomer using the equation shown in the last two lines. The result is 6% of 1-exine and 94% of propylene. Here we have another propylene 1-exine copolymer, carbon-13 NMR spectrum, where peak 9 is 0. That means that triads H, 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 P, and P, H, H do not exist. And we also can suppose that H, P, H is also inexistent. We use now the equations determined previously and the integrals of the corresponding peaks. We have a copolymer with 91.9% of triads PPP, 5.3% of triads PPH plus HPP, and 2.8% of triads PHP. The amount of each monomer can be calculated by the sum of the triads centered in each monomer given a copolymer with 97.2% of propylene and 2.8% of 1-exine. Now I am going to show you other applications and works that we have done applying all this determination of triads. Here we have carbon-13 NMR spectra of ethylene, decycle pentadiene copolymers with different decycle pentadiene content. The assignment of the different peaks have been done and the number of the corresponding carbon atoms can be seen in the structure of the copolymer. When the amount of DCP increases till 9.7%, it starts to appear new peaks corresponding to new sequences richer in DCP. In this table, we can see that the triads have been determined quantitatively. It can be noticed that the new peaks corresponded to the DED triads that were completely absent in the copolymers with 1.6, 3 3.3, 3 and 4.3% of dicyclopentadiene, but it started to be present at higher amount of the comonomer. The triads with consecutive dicyclopentadiene units are not in the table because they were absent. The reaction relativity radius and the average comonomer sequence length have also been calculated. Heteronuclear chemical shift correlation at core spectra of EDCP copolymer with 9.7 mole percent of DCP have been done to be able to assign the peaks of the proton NMR spectrum. In this technique, carbon-13 NMR is correlated with the proton NMR. Here we have the proton NMR of this copolymer. The assignment of all the peaks of this spectrum was only possible thanks to the double dimension spectrum at core. Because in the proton spectrum, the resonance were more difficult to determine due to the superposition of the signal. So in this case, the interpretation of the carbon-13 NMR helped to assign the proton spectrum. Another work that we have done is the study of terpolymers of ethylene propylene and alpha olefins. The ethylene alpha olefin copolymers from alpha olefin propylene to octene have been well studied and the chemical shift of each peak determined. However, the terpolymers have been less studied. So, the objective of this work was the determination of all chemical shift, the quantitative determination of all comonomer sequences, the determination of reaction radius, and of the average comonomer sequence length. For this study, we had to synthesize homopolymers, copolymers, and terpolymers with different amount of monomers to help in the determination of the terpolymers. Here we have the carbon-13 NMR spectra of some of the copolymers. The first spectrum in A is of a 18 propene copolymer. The second one in B is a propene 1-decene copolymer. 
C is an 18 one distinct copolymer, and D is a one distinct homopolymer. These copolymers have been obtained to add in the determination of the terpolymers. Here we have examples of 18 propene one distinct terpolymers with different amount of comonomers. The amount of 18 increases from A to D and the amount of propene decreasing. It can be seen significant differences in this spectra and especially in the regions where there are superposition of peak, the variable amount of comonomer help to the assignment of each peak. For example, the signal number as 10 is composed by multiple peaks and is assigned to the carbon beta beta B1 of triad PEP. In this figure, we have the expanded area between 24 and 25 ppm of five spectra with variable amount of comonomers. Spectra A, C, and D are formed from terpolymers. B is an ethene propene copolymer and E an ethene disin copolymer. In this last spectrum, the existing peak is due to carbon atom beta beta B8 of triad DED peak 9. In a terpolymer EPD, this triad is also present in a spectra C and D, where there is a reasonable amount of vicin, but absent in a spectrum A, where there is a very low amount of vicin. In the spectra where there is a low amount of propene, that is C and D, there are only sequences E, P, E, P, E. But when the amount of propene is higher, there appear sequences of the type P, P, E, P, P, or P, P, E, P, E, plus E, P, E, P, P. So, thanks to the different amount of comonomers, it is possible to be sure of the chemical shift of the different resonances. In this way, it was possible to obtain complete tables of all the experimental and calculated chemical shift for all the carbon atoms and their triad sequences for the terpolymers. In this figure, it is possible to see just one part of the table. There was also possible to obtain equations relating triads and carbon-13 NMR spectrum integrals, as it can be seen here for 18 propene one distinct terpolymers. Here we can see the results obtained using these equations for different terpolymers with variable amounts of comonomers. Comonomer average sequence length and reactivity radius were also possible to be calculated for the terpolymers by carbon-13 NMR. Here are the equations used that are of the same type that for the copolymers. This work has been done for a series of terpolymers of 18 propene alpha olefins from 1 butene to 1 octadecene. More details can be seen in these references. Another work that has been done using carbon 13 NMR is the determination of chemical shift of all the carbon atoms of all types of branches in multi-branched polyethylene and polypropylene obtained with Brookhart catalysis. The quantitative analysis of all the branches has been determined. In this figure, we can see all the type of branches determined in this work, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, and long. When we said long branches, that means branches equal or longer than six carbon atoms. NMR cannot distinguish the differences over six carbon atoms. It is also possible to determine the amount of branches with five bonds or less between them, and also branches like isobutyl and 2-methylexyl, for example.
In another work, we have characterized polyalpha olefins obtained with a, an alpha keto beta diamine nickel initiator by carbon 13 NMR. This type of catalyst can also give multiple branches. Here we have the example of the homopolymerization of one exine with this catalyst at different reaction temperatures, 25 degrees, 0 degrees, and minus 10 degrees, and two concentrations of one exine, 0.85 and 4 mol per liter in the reactor. Here we can see the spectra obtained. By their complexity, it can be seen that they are not only butyl branches, as it should be expected for the homopolymerization of one exine, but many other branches type. It can also be seen the influence of the temperature in the polymer structure. In this work, all the peaks were identified and assigned to a determined carbon atom in the way that we have shown during the course. The different sequences of triad, or sometimes tetrad, have been correlated to the assignments. In this table, it can be seen all the peaks, the calculated and experimental chemical shift, the carbon atoms, and the different sequences. Here are the equations used to determine all the sequences. Finally, here are the results of this analysis. This type of work let have an idea of the mechanism of the polymerization and the influence of the temperature and monomer concentration in the distribution of sequences. For example, it can be said that methyl branches increases with the temperature showing acceleration of 2,6 enchainment and chain walking processes. Another conclusion is that the low concentration of one exine, for example, 0.85 molar decreases the 1-2 insertion, that is, the one giving consecutive exine sequences. With the knowledge of all the sequences present, it is possible to propose a mechanism of this type. In another work, it was polymerized propylene with the same nickel catalyst at two different temperatures. The carbon-13 NMR showed very different spectra depending on the temperature of polymerization. When the reaction was done at minus 20 degrees, the spectrum was of a regio and stereo irregular polypropylene, and at minus 60 degrees it was obtained an isotactic polypropylene. So it was done a detailed characterization of all the spectrum resonance of the irregular polypropylene and here we can see the table that it was obtained. There were characterized 28 peaks. Here we see they are calculated in experimental chemical shift, the corresponding sequences, and the carbon atom assignments. As it is possible to see, there are not only normal propylene units, but also inverted propylene units that are marked with an asterisk and also some ethylene units. Using this table, it was possible to make the quantitative analysis relating the different sequences and stereo sequences with the peak integrals. Here we have the result of the quantitative analysis. As we can notice, the polypropylene made at minus 60 degrees only have the sequences typical of a regular isotactic polypropylene, that is, 100% of triads PPP and 93 of diads meso. We also calculated through the statistical equations that we have studied in part 4 of this course for the enantiomorphic site and chain end mechanism. And we can see that in this case, the enantiomorphic site mechanism fits better with the experimental results. Throughout the determination of the different sequences by carbon-13 NMR, it was possible to deduce the mechanism of the stereo errors and also that the presence of ethylene units it is due to the 1-3 enchainment. 
Finally, it was found the presence of eight different structures that led to understand the mechanism that explained the presence of each one and also to calculate the amount of each structure in each polymer. With this example, we conclude this course where I try to show you the possibilities of the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy in the study of polymers. Besides to define the structure of the polymer, it, was, it is possible to understand through the qualitative and the quantitative analysis the mechanism that leads to each polymer sequence. <laughs>